You, you feel this, this nervousness on the phone there? Sir, I've been trying to make an urgent phone call up there. Well, I don't think it's something I want to do on an overseas phone. You gotta make some phone calls. Hang up the phone, prank call, prank call. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Packernet After Dark. This is the call-in show of the Packernet Podcast Network. If you'd like to uh, call in, if you'd like to participate in the show, please feel free to do so. The phone number here is 608-501-0718. Right, Shia, if you're watching on YouTube, apologize that things went a little haywire on the live stream. I thought that the problem was going to be more complex, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to bother troubleshooting it. So um, I just canceled the stream. I'm like, I'm just going to do this old school. And then I thought, uh, well, first I realized that it was actually just one little click. There's just one setting that got reset on here. And once I switched that, everything was fine. But then beyond that, I thought, okay, why don't I just record it so we at least have YouTube and um, this, that, or the other. So uh, hello to those of you on YouTube. Hello to the podcast listeners. If you are listening on the podcast, by the way, I mentioned this on the live stream, but I'll, I'll mention it again. I've got two lights that are just absolutely killing me right now because everyone's complaining about the quality of the, the camera, the quality of the, the lighting and everything else. I'm going to die here. <laughs> it's so bright in here. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. If you're uh, listening on the podcast, check out Packing a Podcast on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and where are we at? It's reverse right there. Click on that or, or take a picture of that, whatever. It'll take you over to the daily podcast it's more than just this this is just the nighttime thing we got a whole bunch of other podcasts over there dedicated to the green bay packers so anyways um i've already answered a couple of these but let's do it again starting with jersey mike hey it's jersey mike um that's weird the first time it hasn't gone straight to voicemail sorry if there's a bunch of background noise i'm at work this morning um listening to the paul farrington show and they made a uh comparison about jordan love and i was like huh oh wait a second um, but the comparison was, you know, there's a guy in the NFL who sat for a while, and uh, then he came out and lit the league on fire, and uh, his name is Kirk Cousins. So the question is, if Jordan Love performs like Kirk Cousins is, does, did, right, are we happy? I'd be happy. Like, we don't need the Hall of Fame. Kirk Cousins is more than a great quarterback, uh, and he definitely keeps the Vikings in contention for a lot of things. So, yeah. Um, h- how do you feel if Jordan Love, the best that we ever get, is Kirk Cousins? I-, I would feel pretty damn good about it. Anyway, go Pack go. Yeah, man, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty torn on it. I mean, it, it seems stupid to say, no, we should be able to do better when you factor in the guy's a top 10 quarterback pretty much every year. Um, at least since he came to Minnesota, he has been. Um But it, it just kind of sucks. Like, would I would I take that bargain? Like, he'll never be any better but at least you set the floor of being Kirk Cousins. I kind of feel like I wouldn't take that. I don't think I would take that bargain. Just because, you know, Kirk Cousins has been on some great teams. He's had the wide receivers. He's had the defense. And they just, I mean, they were never even really close to being contenders. And maybe that's not Kirk Cousins' fault. I don't know. Um, I just feel like I would rather take the risk of saying either this dude is like, you know, he's up there with the top guys or he's not, you know, he's well below Kirk Cousins and we go and find somebody else, I think would be my preference. I mean, I, I agree with you. The guy's a really good quarterback, has been. Um, but I also know that for whatever reason, despite the talent that this guy's played with many, many times, uh, I know they struggle with their defense this year, but they've had great defenses in the past. Um I don't know. I, I just I I just don't think I would do it. Um, if he comes out and plays like Kirk Cousins, though, then then you know we're we're vindicated in everything we've ever said. And we get to pull all the receipts and and everything else because he's going to be fine. And, and maybe we can win with that. Maybe we can. I I think the only thing that makes me nervous is I I want to say if he comes here, if we put Kirk Cousins on this team, I think we could win. But then again, you look at it and go, I think he's had better in Minnesota you know, clearly better wide receivers. He's got almost as good of an offensive line right now. And again, I know the defense is tough, but um, I mean, you go back to when he had a good defense, I'm sure he had it. Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen at the time. Um, what was that? 2017. What did he have in 27? I don't know. I'm not going to look it up right now, but um, yeah, he's, he's had some stuff. 
and they just have never been able to get it done. So it would make me nervous. So, um, I, I mean, I, I, I'll say that I will be, ha <clears throat> I will be happy if he turns out to be that good, but I wouldn't personally take that deal. I know that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, but that's, that's my answer to the question. Hey, this is Garrett reporting from Ray Nitschke Field Bobby. on day two of joint practice with the Green Bay Packers and New England Patriots. Um, I just got done finishing an interview with a 12-year-old uh, Bobby Richardson, and he tells me that he has a very interesting story to tell about uh, the coach, uh, as well known as uh, the Hoodie, uh, riding his bike over to the practice field. Um, he saw the hoodie walking up, said, Hey coach, would you like to ride my bike over to the practice? He goes, yeah, sure, son. So he follows him along and, uh, he makes a corner. He kind of, the hoodie pulls away from him and starts bicycling, pedaling really fast. And he gets over to the fence where all the bikes are parked and the other players are dismounting from the bikes. And they, he gets up to his nice BMX, uh, bicycle and lo and behold, he gets on the bike and finds it. Both of his tires have been deflated. Now, go figure, folks. A guy who has a uh, history with deflating footballs deflated the kids' uh, bicycle tires after he used them. So I'm out. This is Garrett from Ray Nishke Field. Hope to hear more uh, great news from uh, the Packers today, but uh, I'm out. What she said? I didn't know what else to do with that dad joke, man. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was uh, that was a good one, Garrett. I appreciate the report from camp. Brian, Kyle from Madison. I gotta up my uh, soundboard game. Um, I gotta figure out how to do that. I think that would be. I mean, right now, I mean, we could just do that's what she said for everything. Kind of just breaks the tension a little bit, but we'll see. See if I can add to that. What is up? What's going on? Okay. Two things. One, I the more I hear about our problems at center, the more it just solidifies an opinion I've had since the draft in 2021. And that is, it was, it's going to possibly, and I hope I'm wrong, maybe Myers can turn it around, but I do, I felt like draft night and I continue to feel that Taking Myers one pick earlier than Creed Humphrey might end up being the worst thing that Gudikins does in a draft. I just <laughs> – can you imagine if we just swap those players right now, how different our line would be right now? I mean, it would be it, – it, it would be in a whole different league. And he was right there. Everybody – I know it doesn't matter, but everybody had him rated ahead of Myers. And we – we took him one pick ahead, and it just it just makes me crazy because uh, I think it could have lasting uh, implications in setting us back. The other thing is I think it's going to be – Before we move on, um, I completely get what you're saying. I just generally don't like the thought process of judging the pick based on a better pick getting picked later because that's going to happen every single time. No matter how good Lucas Van Ness is, there's probably going to be somebody that was picked after him that was better. And I'm not going to say it was a bad pick as a result. Um, I also generally don't like the everybody new thing because although you're right, I think the Packers do that very often. In fact, only recently, only the last couple of years has that changed. But I feel like every year the Packers took people way earlier than most people said they should. Um. The problem that I, I guess, have with that is, number one, we, we have no idea who people that matter, where they had them ranked. All right, There's 32 teams. We don't have any idea. We know that the Packers had Myers ahead of Humphrey. We have no idea what the other 31 teams had on that. We don't know. Because only one team took Creed Humphrey, and they took him after Myers was already off the board. For all we know, they would have taken Myers. Now you can, we can say that that's stupid, but we, we really don't know. You know, um, different different variables that we're not aware of, and what teams are looking for, and 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 scouting notes, and this, that, or the other. And then the, on top of that, there's also examples. You know, Josh Jackson should have gone ahead of Jair Alexander, according to quote unquote everyone. Um, 
that obviously worked out pretty well for us, right? You know, every pick that people didn't like that panned out, Rashawn Gary, we should have taken Brian Burns. Well, if actually, if we had listened to what everybody knew, we'd be in a much worse situation. So, you know, I, 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 I clearly the Packers took the wrong guy. Clearly they missed on, I mean, it, it's sort of like two separate things. I don't know that we missed on Josh Myers. I, I still think the guy's getting a bad rep. Um, Again, he had a 75 pass blocking grade. That's that's really good. I mean, if, if we just look at the centers in general, again, I know he doesn't run block as well, but nobody cares. I, I just want to make sure we understand. Um, let me filter out a couple guys here. He was the seventh highest graded pass blocking center. And only two of the guys that were above him haven't even had good run blocking grades. So it's not like, well, everybody else was. No, that, that's not true. Um, and, and two of these guys really didn't play very much at all anyways. Uh, Corey Levin and James Ferencz, you could possibly say that he was the fifth highest graded if you remove them. But Jason Kelsey and Creed Humphrey, those are the only two that had like really good run blocking grades and positive pass blocking grades. That's it. So, I mean, he, he is good. Then there's a question of did we miss on Creed Humphrey? And the answer, obviously, to that is yes. We should have taken Creed Humphrey. But those are two separate things, and there's always going to be a pile of guys that we missed on. So, I mean, if Josh Myers is good, does that still make it the worst pick in history because Creed Humphrey is always going to be there? I mean, there's almost nothing Josh Myers can do to reach Creed Humphrey status. I mean, Creed Humphrey is already maybe, I mean, he's the highest graded you know, whatever. But that, but you could say that about every single pick that came before Creed Humphrey. Everybody missed. Everybody, you know, it's the, the biggest mistake anybody's ever made. So, I mean, again, I get what you're saying. And um, clearly they should have gone with Creed Humphrey. There's there's no question about that. But just in general, as a general point of, of, of note or whatever, um, I think Josh Myers should be judged based on Josh Myers. And I think Josh Myers is, I understand the snapping issues, right? But, but I, I don't think that's going to really continue. I mean, that, 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 that hasn't happened in the two years that he's been here. There's been a, a handful of mistakes with Rogers. Um, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it will continue. I don't know, but I, I think it's just getting familiar with, with Jordan and whatnot. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm still not, first of all, I'm still not of the opinion he's a bad center because I, I just, I don't see that as being the case. But then beyond that, I'm still of the opinion that, I mean, he took a big jump from year one to year two. He did. That's just a, a matter of, of, I guess I can't call it a fact because it's based on the uh, data from PFF, um, which we could say could pot potentially be inaccurate. But um, I, I don't, I, I, I'm still excited about a potential year three leap and, and we're kind of moving off of that and just like, this guy is terrible. He's trash. And then again, making it worse because, you know, Creed Humphrey exists, which again, I just, I don't like putting those two things together because it, it doesn't, it, it shouldn't be that way. That's, it's sort of an, in my opinion, an unfair metric. It, it is two separate things. And, and they, again, one is clearly a miss Creed Humphrey, everybody that picked before a miss Creed Humphrey. Then there's the question of Josh Myers, which is a standalone issue. And I don't know that we missed missed on Josh Myers, right? I I don't I don't, and I, I think everybody talking about we need to find somebody else. I don't think the Packers have really wavered on that at all. Josh Myers has always been the guy. The snaps are frustrating, but um, they all they understand what I think a lot of fans just kind of refuse to, and that is he's a pretty solid center in terms of what we need him to do, which is protect the quarterback. Really fun this next couple weeks as the team comes together. You know there's going to be some surprises. There always is. Uh, and the roster comes together. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be really interesting also, though, to see how Gutekunst views this roster. Yeah. Because I think unlike us fans who, even if we understand it might be a down year, Gutekunst appears to have the stomach to withstand <laughs> a season of – some not so great stuff happening. Yes. Um, however, I mean, it actually is kind of admirable. And I think most of the fan base just hates it because they want a GM that just panics. And this dude doesn't flinch. And I admire it. But again, most of the fan base seems to hate it. 
right? Same with, with the with the Aaron Rodgers trade and with the, when when Aaron Rodgers was um, saying he wanted out, everybody panicked. Oh no, he's gonna he's gonna retire and we're we're screwed. We're stuck and he just didn't flinch. He's like, nope, you're playing for us and that's it. And he did. Then when it came around for the trade, it's like, oh, he's gonna retire. Blah, blah, blah. And we traded him, and we got a great haul for him. I mean, it's just there's there's always the 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 fans panic. We we got to go get a free agent. We got to do this. We got to trade Bakhtiari. We we can't pay Rashawn. We should just trade Rashawn. We 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 can't pay Jair. We don't have any money. We, we should trade Jair now because we we can't afford him. <laughs> He's just dude, just freaking relax. We got this. And this year is is no different. It's from from sort of a different standpoint. But it's going to be a lot of like, what are you going to do about tight end? Like, I don't know. Figure it out. Might bring somebody in, but uh, we'll see what uh, Mr. Allen can do. What are you going to do about safety? Well, we got safeties. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We got to see how they can play. You know, whatever. What about Anders? What are you going to do? You going to find a new kid? What would you would call Mason? Quick. What if he signs with a new team? No, we're we're going to go with Anders. Like it, stuff takes time. And and I think part of it is just understanding that these things happen. And I think us as fans sometimes don't. Right? Anders starts missing kicks. I think the coaching staff and Brian Gutekunst in the, the front office, they expected it. We didn't. So they see it and they're like, yeah, it makes sense. That sucks. Well, so then this, this year's probably going to suck too. Yeah, probably. It's crazy, right? But that's what you got to do, man. You got to work out the kinks and uh, hopefully you can figure it out. Well, what if he doesn't? Find somebody else, I guess. I don't know. He just, he, he doesn't panic. So... You're right about he he can stomach it. He's he's not afraid. Like I'm even doing the 53. Like well, we can't and like we got to do this. And I, and I don't know. How to, he he doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't care. He's he's gonna do what he thinks is best, and then we'll go from there. I do think if he sees a team that could make the playoffs and maybe even do a little damage in the playoffs, I I don't think he's so rigid in like his belief that. He, I think he would make roster moves accordingly if that's how he views the roster. And so I'm going to be kind of interested to see how that goes. Uh, vice versa, if he, or, you know, if he doesn't, if he doesn't feel that way, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Bakhtiari traded and some things like that. Uh, one of my fears is, though, with our kicker. Now, I hope he figures it out. But one of my fears is that, you know, his brother, uh, was it Daniel Carlson, the, the Raiders yeah. kicker? Remember, he was on the Vikings. And they, you know, they cut him after he missed like four field goals against us. And my fear is that they think that Anders is his brother. And that if they can just weather this storm, he's going to be great. And he might not be. And, uh, yeah, that's a fear of mine anyway. So, bye. Well, and, and that's, that's the thing. The, the Packers are saying you're going to have to suffer because these things take time. And some of the fan base is like, yeah, see, you just got to deal with it, and then he's going to be fine. No, 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 no. They didn't say it's going to be fine. They didn't say it's going to be perfect. They didn't say he's going to be a good kicker. They just said it takes time. So there's a period of pain, and then hopefully there's light at the end of the tunnel. If not, you get a little longer period of pain, at which point we start to find a replacement. That is an option. It's it's not a it's not a guarantee. They're, they're, so they're not going to do that thing like the Vikings did, where they say he missed some kicks, get rid of him, and then somebody else reaps the rewards of impatience. The Packers will be patient because they're again another benefit of not having an owner is patience, and that's to the Packers' benefit. Where a lot of teams they they don't have that. Some owners will will allow their staff that they hire to do their jobs, but some won't, and they'll say get this guy out of here. So they understand, and everybody understands. Mark Murphy understands. Everybody's on board. There's going to be pain points. And this entire year is going to be pain. Jordan Love is pain. The wide receivers are pain. The tight ends are pain. The kicker is pain. The defensive line is pain. There's pain across the board. There's going to be so many mistakes, so many people not knowing what they're doing. But that's what we got to do. And we're not going to cut people just because they're learning. We cut people once we get to the point where we have taught you everything and you're not learning. You're not improving. You know everything, and you still can't do it. Once we have exhausted all options and there's no more growth, this is just who you are, that's when we're going to have to explore that option. But at this point, Anders Carlson just got off the boat. He just got in here. They're retraining him how to do everything. So they're certainly not going to cut him at this point. Rich Passaccia is going to scream and spit in his face, quite literally. 
but um just is what it is man and so uh who was it telling me to breathe yesterday and just deal with it or whatever that's that's really all i can do that's all any of us can do we just got to deal with it but um and it's gonna suck that's just the reality if you don't get out of my face the fly is taunting me he's like you can't hit me you try to hit me with that hat 75 times and you miss he's like come play i'm like bro just wait i'm gonna get a shotgun i'm gonna redecorate my office yeah you think it's funny you think it's real funny i'm gonna laugh over your no never mind i'm getting a little dark here hey kyle again hey real hey. quick did you see the twitter video of jair shooting the breeze with the commissioner the other day when he was in town for the draft thing I saw a picture. I didn't know it was a video. Uh, Jair goes over and daps him up. I just started laughing out loud. Like, man, the pair on that guy to go over and dap up the commissioner. Whoo, Jair, I love you, man. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll, we'll see if it pans out. I think it's a good idea, man. I remember how, uh, you know, Farvin Rogers would always talk up the refs. Always buddy-buddy with him. Rogers, especially, you know, earlier on. I haven't seen him do it in a while, but yeah, he was always buddy buddy with the refs, and then you'd always have people complaining because he'd get all the calls. And yeah, he, they, the refs probably were looking a little closer. And it's about, well, now Rogers probably wasn't talking to the refs recently because he didn't even have to anymore. If anybody even looks at a quarterback, it's a flag. But I mean, they they work the refs, so you know, work the commissioner. Couldn't hurt. You know, next time there's a little substance here, you can go talk, get on the phone. But like, come on, man. And no, it's no big deal. Come on, help me out. Couldn't hurt, man. Just. uh you know, treat people well because you never know how it's gonna how fate will bring you back together. Same same thing I thought with like Billy Turner, and I understand where he's coming from defending his coach, but him like swearing at another coach and everything else. You know, again, I get it, but there are now only you know there's only a handful of teams that'll take you because you've been on a bunch of teams that have already cut you. They're probably not going to bring you back. Then you go and spit in their face, and there's probably some people that just don't like the way that you did that, spouting off on social media. I mean, it's just hurting you. Be good to coaches, because then they get hired somewhere else, and then they bring you. That's basically what happened in this job anyways. So don't burn bridges. Build them up. Go talk to the commissioner. Couldn't hurt. What's going on? It's Omar the Firefighter. How you doing? What's up? Uh, I just wanted to call. It's, it's, uh, I ain't been up that long since I called, but... Just wanted to say uh, thank you. I saw that you uh, gave me a, a channel in the group chat <laughs> for movies. So definitely, guys, uh, I'm going to keep it simple. Um, I'm a, I might post in there a couple times. I'm going nice. to keep it simple, as I said. I'm I was hoping you saw that, by the way, because it's, um, it's actually Thomas Austin that's controlling that now. I gave him control to come up with the channels. He was all big on like doing all this stuff and i was like just just do it yourself man you you clearly have a vision for this you go for it and then i saw it's like omar's movie corner or something like that i don't know but um yeah i was hoping you were i mean i'll, I'll come hang out talk about movies i think it's kind of cool there is if you're wondering what we're talking about a discord i should put up a link for that in the thing here that'd be kind of cool to get everybody up in that discord we have a Discord uh, because people would call in and there would be like conversations back and forth. You know, like Jimmy would talk to Tommy and they'd talk, you know, they'd call in and be like, hey, Jimmy. Like, it's like, guys, guys, we're, we're doing a thing here. Like, you can talk about whatever you want. Talk about movies, food, doesn't really matter. But like, if we're spending all this time going back and forth talking to each other, go talk over there. So, so far, I think that's been pretty successful. Um, go hang out over there. We got a place to talk movies, place to talk whatever. So. I thought that that was kind of cool, and I'm very glad that you found it and you're in there. I'm just going to say if a movie's good or bad, if you should watch it, you shouldn't watch it. And y'all can do the same for me. So if you like a movie or a show. You know what I just saw, by the way? I just watched, um, since horror has been a, a big topic, it was, I think it was the first day on Netflix today. But it's, uh, what is it, like The Priest's Exorcist or whatever? It's got Russell Crowe as the Italian exorcist guy. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it, it's... I was kind of thinking about it because it's a little bit over the top and I kind of appreciate just sort of the simplicity of the original Exorcist, which is a fantastic movie. It's just very dark. It's very, you know, it's just got that feel all the time. And there's a couple moments, you know, where they're like playing U2 and the it's like, don't, don't brighten it. And then, you know, it gets a little bit, gets a little bit big with like the dungeon and like the big conspiracy about like, who, you know, all this stuff. And, but at the same time, it's like, you know, 
if you're going to basically redo The Exorcist, I guess you got to take it up a notch. But I thought it was pretty good. It was decent, considering there's so much garbage that I've been watching. I'm force feeding myself, uh, what is it, Bloodlines? I, I've, I haven't enjoyed that in like four episodes, and I keep watching it because I'm invested. But um, no, I thought it was I thought it was a decent movie. So let me know what you think. Just go ahead and put it in the group chat uh, on the Omar's movies, and uh, just let let let's share the good entertainment with our Packer family. I like it. I'm gonna um, do it right my now. My question to you is. Okay, sorry. Yes. Pack Daddy. Yeah. What's up? Uh, what is your moment? It doesn't have to do with Rogers. Mm -hmm. That sticks out of your mind is like a great moment that you remember. Um, so I'll give you mine to give an example. I remember when we had drafted Greg Jennings, I was pissed. I wanted somebody else. I wanted who the, who the uh, Patriots drafted because he won like the hands competition okay. for the rookies, like pre-draft. So we got Greg Jennings and I was like, man. But then I saw like how good Greg Jennings was doing. And we played the Denver Broncos, and we were losing. And, like, in the fourth quarter, and I was like, hey, man, we're going to win this game. Like, Favre is going to throw this pass to Jennings, and we're going to win. And, like, it's not like I knew he was going to do that. I just knew, like, I was like, hey, they gonna, they're not going to double cover him, and he's doing a good job. Watch him score a touchdown. I said that, and literally <laughs> the next play, Favre throws it to Jennings, and he does, like, a walk-off touchdown. Um, that was freaking awesome. And I, I just was screaming and I was excited because I called it like right before it happened. Like the next play, it happened. It was just an awesome moment. So I just want to hear one of your moments like that, if you got one. And peace and love to the whole Pac Left family. And uh, talk to y'all later. All right. Bye. Man, this is tough. Not Aaron Rod. I mean, there's, there's the obvious ones. I'm trying to remember some more like. Uh... Less obvious, you know, the Super Bowl and then Rogers, you know, when his dad died and all that stuff. Um, I mean, the, the only th the the one that's similar to that wasn't actually Packers related. I was, I think, I've mentioned it before. I was my first year, I think, playing uh, fantasy football, so it would have been two thousand nine, I think. And um, I had Roddy White on my team, and I was losing. And the Falcons were at the 50-yard line. And I said, because uh, I was watching it on the tracker, I was like, I just want to see a, a big line go from here all the way to the end zone. And then I want to read touchdown, 50-yard touchdown complete to Roddy White. And then, you know, like you said, it just immediately happened. Um, and then another semi-similar story that I thought was pretty cool. You guys actually would have had the chance to see it here live if you watched the draft a couple years ago. But um, pretty fun, pretty cool moment for me was... Um, my son, we, 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 so the last two years now, he's gone through and looked at all the prospects and he's sort of graded them or whatever, ranked them. And his favorite prospect was Christian Watson. And so I saw when we drafted Christian Watson, I had to throw my headset. I ran upstairs because it was a, you know, a little delay or something up there. But um, I got a chance to see his reaction to them drafting his favorite player. So that was actually a really, really cool, cool moment. So um and he turned out to be a good player so my son's a pretty good scout i should see who he said were some of his favorites and see how they're doing but anyways yeah I, I i don't have a ton of others i mean again there's there's the hail marys and all that stuff with rogers i don't have a ton that stick out in my mind as far as great moments um off the top of my head but hopefully that's a sufficient answer well, what do we got for time here why don't we take a break uh, you can support the podcast at patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy. Uh, please check out grassfedcooperative.com. You can use promo code Packer 10, capital P Packer 10 to get 10% off your order. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, Ryan. Steve up in Alaska. Hope you're going to hear me on. What's up? Driving up to Fairbanks. I got a good piece of fly. Had my busiest week ever last week. Good. And, uh, so I got to go get more stuff so I can sell more things. Love uh, crawling in, got a few things I like to like to bring up. The first one I want to get to is the kicker thing. Um, that was a couple months ago, I think. I I called in and I mentioned the fact that not having the kicker might be a big problem for us, and we had kind of got used to having one, and nobody was really discussing it. And here we are dealing with a kicker that shady. And we're not sure of, and it's a worry. Um, it kind of bugs me that they don't have another guy in there. 
some shit with them. But I, I'm, I'm thinking the reason is, is they, they really want this guy to work out, and they're worried if they bring in somebody to compete with them that he's going to lose. And they're going to have ways to draft that uh, guy. And, uh, drafting kickers is always tough. I, just, I always feel it's better to stick with free agents or draft a free agent because, I mean, they're, they're there. But I'd, I'd, I'd like to see them through. I'd, I'd, like much of the rest of the team, I'm thinking this is a position where we're going to have to just kind of, you know, cross our fingers and bite our lips and just kind of muscle our way through this season and see if he can get himself to be better in the long run. I don't know how much kickers get to practice in college because practice for college players is pretty limited anyway. So cross fingers and kind of hope I'm thinking is what we're going to have to do for at least a year, maybe two, with this guy. Uh, the other one is Colin Coward. Well, let's pause there before we jump to the next one. Um, yeah, I think I think that's actually a good point in terms of it's not so much that they're scared he's going to lose because he probably will lose, but the point is he's going to lose and they're not going to go on to the next guy, so why bring somebody in? They're not going to replace him. This is a long-term investment. They're going to see it through. So other than let's bring somebody in to kind of push him, um, which again, I think is is probably not the best plan just because all we're really doing is taking opportunities away from him, you know, instead of him getting, you know, seven opportunities in a game, he's going to get four or five or something, whereas the other guy who's going to be him, and plus it's just going to be bad for him because everybody's going to say, okay, you brought in this guy, he's better than your rookie, so I guess the new guy gets the job, right? And they're going to say no. So... Yeah, I think I think that is largely the point. They're not going to bring in an. I, I don't think they're going to bring in another kicker. I shouldn't say they're not going to. We'll see what happens. But I, it, it would make sense to me to not bring somebody in, because again, it, it's not up for debate. It's not about finding somebody who can kick at seventy percent instead of sixty-five percent, because that's not the point. The point is to get the guy that we have to kick better, and we're it's going to take a while to kind of train him up and get him there. So. That would be, I think, more of the thought process. Uh, the only thing I could see good about the foolishness that that guy is saying is that it's going to become a real big rallying point for Packer fans in general. I think we can all get together and, and support the fact that what he's saying makes no sense. And we should all look at it with more of a logical eye to what things are and what the, what the team is going to be. Um, outside of that, uh, the Jets offensive line is starting to make me pretty nervous. I, uh, I, uh, a huge space. It's funny because I don't know how to feel about the offensive line. It's like I'm I'm happy because I don't think they can be a good football team with that offensive line. I'm also nervous, though, because I don't know if Rodgers can make it even half the season with that offensive line. So it's kind of a balancing act, I guess. Commissioner to other teams and what they're doing, but man, I want that first-round draft pick. And if they can't keep Rodgers on his feet, that, that's just going to suck. You know, it, it's more important about what we get than whether or not he can get, continue on with his career. But, all right, man, time's about to take care. Talk to you all later. Go back. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still on the side of bad offensive line because I think with a good offensive line, they're really going to go far into it. And at that point, it's like, well, a late first or a high second, it's it's basically the same thing. I mean, for once, generally speaking, once you get past like the twentieth pick, you're getting a second round pick. Depends on the draft, obviously. Sometimes it's it's there's even I think this past year there was even less than that. It's kind of a a weak draft at the top end. But um, yeah, I mean, it, if Rodgers has a healthy offensive line, they're they're going to go into the playoffs. They may go deep into the playoffs, and we're end up getting a a second round pick at pick 30 or something stupid so um i would rather them struggle as a team and hope that rogers does stay healthy at least 65 percent. because now we're talking about potentially a top 15 pick because the jets could end up being a pretty bad football team um and that would be fantastic right would you risk getting a top 15 for assurance that you're going to get 
you know, like a late first, early second kind of thing. Like, ah, just, it's you know what? Just roll the freaking dice. Just roll the dice. I want the high first round pick if we can get it, and I think there's a chance that we can get it. And the the path to that is the defense underperforming expectations, and the offense struggling largely because of a putrid offensive line. On top of that, I think they saw they had the the toughest first seven game stretch um, of any team as far as pass rush goes. They have a brutal start to their season as far as pass rushers. So that will sort of set the tone for the New York Jets and hopefully sort of demoralize the team as a whole. And uh, this whole honeymoon phase goes to goes a little bit dark. That would be my my hope and my dream. But we'll see. I don't know. I don't know what that team's going to be. Hey, Ryan. Uh, this is Anthony from Detroit. Up, I'm man? calling. I just left the gym, and the first thing I hit when I came back on was Jersey Mike's call about the smash burger that he was making with yeah. the fried, uh, not fried egg, the fried onions. onion rings yep. and or onion straws and bacon. It just sounded so good. Um, I actually had a football take, but I have to call about this first. Uh, it sounded great. I wanted to one-up Jersey Mike and recommend a burger for you Do that it. I always get. Anytime I get a burger out, I always get, I don't know if you've talked about it probably, but an over easy egg yep. on it. And it just kind of cracks over, you know, I've only had that. I think once I was on, I was, it was actually my honeymoon in South Carolina. And I think it was bacon and a fried egg. And I'm not sure if there's anything else on it, but it was good. It was definitely very good. The burger and it like coats it just a little bit extra. It's super fattening, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> um, sure. As I leave the gym, I'm probably <laughs> just hungry, but it's so good. There's a place by me here in Michigan, um, and they have one where it's got an egg, an uh, over-easy egg, and then a hash brown and bacon. Oh, it's yeah. like a hangover burger or something like that. It is my favorite burger I have ever had. And moving forward, if I eat out anywhere, I'm getting uh, – well, I have for years now, but I'm getting a burger with egg on it. It is so good. Uh, that's for Jersey Mike. It's also for you, anyone who – wants to try it. It's fantastic. Um, I have a few takes I want to talk about. Mostly the, uh, you know, 2013 to 2017 Packers and just how great of a job Brian Gutekinds, uh has done from those Fixing teams and that. just how different the roster is. But uh, that's a call for probably another day because uh, I'm almost home. But yeah, try the burger if you haven't. And uh, Jersey Mike, thanks for making me hungry after the gym. Thanks. Yeah, so that that burger would be pretty easy to make compared to Jersey Mike's. So I will I will try to do my best. I just you know got to get some some materials and whatnot, and I can get knock that one out. I'll I'll try, I'll try to do both, kind of like I did with the hot dogs. I was thinking about I was like oh, I got to get Vienna beef, dude. We got a Chicago style hot dog place right down the street. I could just go there and compare. But um, I'm sure they have Vienna beef. Um, but yeah, I got to get that going. It, it, I do like that last little part that you brought up though. Because I, I think it's kind of important context. We remember how the team started. Remember like how difficult it was. All the different things we were trying to do, like our our edge rushers, we didn't have any. Clay was washed up and Perry was terrible. You know, um, we had Mike Daniels and like nothing else. Uh, we could never get any linebackers ever that could play. Our our DBs were just so bad. We had the worst safety group. Remember McMillan? We had the worst safety group in football back before we got Ha Ha Clinton Dix and our corners. We tried so hard over and over and over. And look what we have now. And on top of that, we've we've been able to maintain the offense. I mean, no, we don't have Devontae anymore. And we'll see what, what Jordan Love. I mean, obviously that we've got the 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 powerhouse guys like that. But to be able to to revamp this defense to potentially be the most talented defense, whether or not Joe Barry can put it together as a separate issue. But then on top of that, look how good Christian Watson looks. Look at Romeo Dobbs. 
the fact that we even have a quarterback locked and loaded, like Rodgers leaving, what are you going to do? Oh, we already took care of that in 2020. He's he's good to go. Oh, freaking sweet. Oh, and we've never had a tight end, but now we've got Luke Musgrave, who looks like very easily could be one of the best we've ever had. I mean, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but it, it's a pretty low bar to begin with. But what about the offensive line? Is it still a good offensive line? Yes, it is. Bakhtiari is still here and fantastic. Oh, by the way, we drafted Elton Jenkins, who is a freaking stud. Josh Myers is a sixth-round guy. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Uh, John Runyon is a sixth-round guy that is one of the best run uh, pass-blocking guards in football. Josh Myers, yes, we could have had a better one if we had taken the other guy. But Josh Myers is a solid pass-blocking center that we drafted in the second round. Oh, and a fourth-round pick, Zach Tom, is holding down the right side. We're all very excited about him. He seems like a fantastic football player in the fourth freaking round. And then on top of that, you know, we, we all the stuff we did on defense. Oh, and we added Jaden Reed. Oh, and we have another tight end, Tucker Craft, that we're going to develop. Oh, and then we drafted A.J. Dillon, who's, who's there, and Aaron Jones. And how do we have so much talent everywhere? Again, some of these guys might not pan out. I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but... Just try to remember what it looked like in 2017 and 2018 and how freaking hopeless it was. Like, all we had was Rodgers, and it wasn't good enough. I mean, Rodgers didn't even play that bad in 2018. He was pretty solid, but you'd never know it because the whole team was so awful. Look at what has happened. It's unfreaking believable It really is. I don't know if that I've, I've really fully understood that until you kind of brought up that point because the point is it's really hard just to fix one issue look how long it took the vikings to fix their offensive line year after year after year after year the sea the seahawks it's been like seven eight years where like the number one priority is offensive line they still haven't fixed it there's their offensive line sucks i mean just the, the baltimore ravens trying to get wide receivers it's just like a joke. The Packers never even try, and the first time they just halfway try, they're like, all right, let's get some receivers. They get Watson, they get Dobbs, they get Ture. The next year they get Jaden Reed. Boom. <laughs> An entire wide receiver room, stacked and loaded. We'll see to what degree, but clearly better than anything Baltimore has done. It's kind of freaking remarkable. And then to have such a spoiled fan base to look at and go, meh, it's not good enough, meh. Dude, you have to understand how ridiculous this is. It's, it's, it, it shouldn't happen. It really, really shouldn't be that easy. And if Jordan Love pans out and, and even two of these wide receivers end up being really solid, like if we have a one and a two on that list between Watson, Dobbs, Reed, Turay, Wicks, um, that is an unfreaking believable job done by the GM, not even counting all that stuff. And again, the defense on top of it, adding Devontae Wyatt, Colby Wooden, and Carl Brooks to Kenny Clark. Oh, and TJ Slayton was added. Oh, and Jonathan Ford was added. Adding Rashawn Gary and Justin Hollins in free agency and Lucas Van Ness and Kingsley and Igbari, who was a late round pick. Drafting Quay Walker to add to free agent Devondre Campbell to give us the probably the best pair of linebackers we've had, I don't know, since the 60s. Oh, and we got Isaiah McDuffie and Eric Wilson who are here, who are actually pretty solid. They're great special teamers and really solid backups. We added Jair Alexander. Oh, and we brought in free agent Razul Douglas to be one of the better cornerback duos in all of football. Eric Stokes, by the way, is still here, but he's injured. He can't play right now. And then we got a seventh-round pick, Carrington Valentine, who just suddenly looks like he's a freaking star. I don't know if he is, but that's kind of crazy. Oh, and then Keyshawn Nixon, who is a nobody with the Raiders, comes over to try to do some special team stuff. So he's a pure special teamer, and then we try him, try to make him into a return man, and he's one of the best return guys in football. Oh, and by the way, he's our starting slot corner. I mean, that's freaking crazy. Do we have a safety? No, we don't really have a safety. Do we have a kicker? I don't know. Probably not. But what I just described in the short window that this guy's been here, he's been here a very short period of time, and most of the stuff I described was in place prior to this year. That's just, that's stupid. 
That's crazy. And it's also part of the reason, and I, I don't mean to pick on you, but it's it's also part of the reason why when we look at Josh Myers, who is a good pick, in my opinion, we'll see. I mean, if he if he just cannot hand the ball to the quarterback between his legs, okay, fine. If he regresses a, as a pass blocker, fine. But as he is now, without even counting the very real potential that he takes another step as a pass blocker, as he is now, I think he's a good pick. And so I will judge him as a good pick, not as a failure because he should have been, he could have been this other pick, which is a better pick. So anyways, I appreciate the call. Yo, it's Jimmy. Jimmy. Um, so a uh, couple of things. Um, first of all, I've discovered recently that there is a chocolate covered payday. Uh, it was a little while ago since we've it's been a while since we've been talking about candy bars, sure, but uh, yes. especially now with your global YouTube audience, I thought maybe I'd <laughs> reintroduce the topic. And I just wanted to, you know, um, bring everyone's attention to the chocolate covered payday. It's pretty good. Pretty good. I like throwing it in the fridge so it's got a nice chill to it. Um, yes. And also, I don't know, remember if my uh, passion for the. How does a chocolate covered payday compare to a Snickers? It's got to be relatively close, which is weird because it's like, I love payday. Adding chocolate seems amazing. Not a huge fan of Snickers. It's fine, but it's like it's it's a Milky Way with nuts, which makes it worse, which is just, it doesn't make sense in my brain how it's like, this is amazing. And then if you had chocolate, it's better, but it's also worse because now it's Snickers and it would be better if you got rid of the nuts, but the nuts are, I don't know. I don't know. I'm freaking nuts. The good old fashioned Mr. Good bar ever came through, but mm. if you're a fan of chocolate and peanuts, at least, um, you really can't go wrong with a Mr. Good bar. At any rate, um, that, that's my, that's my take on candy bars. Um, so pause for comment. <clears throat> uh, Packers, turn it into the Packers. Uh, I, I was thinking about, um, this Anders situation mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it certainly doesn't seem like it's getting any better. It's getting weird, honestly. Um, what do you think the chances are that with this trend of going forward on fourth down and whatnot, I'm not going to talk about this yet, so I thought I'd bring it up. Um, maybe we just don't kick very many field goals at all. Like, we just go for it a bunch. And with our multi-pronged, super cool Matt LeFleur offense, um, maybe it's like not that hard to pick up three yards, uh, on fourth and three or fourth and four or whatever. Well, not fourth and four, and then we'll need four yards. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, rather than going for a field goal that, um, <clears throat> you know, is either pretty far, so we don't have faith in it, or it's pretty close, so we don't have faith in it. <laughs> and we're that much closer to a touchdown. And it feels to me like that could maybe be the formula for this year. Um, I'm sure we'll try, but, you know, if he <laughs> fails, like, screw it. Let's just not kick field goals. All gas, no break, right? That's the whole LeFleur way. Um, let's see. Anything else that I want to say about anything? Um, excited for this Patriots game. I love these joint pack, uh, practices. It's real fun to hear about Jordan Love looking good against somebody else's defense and our defense looking good against somebody else's offense. It's like, it's, it's the best. I, I really dig it. And if, if, if Rogers was a part of not having joint practices in the past, uh, which I'm pretty sure that seems like the case, yeah. um, <laughs> and it's really, uh, unfortunate because I think they're really valuable and really fun for us fans. Go back, go. Yeah. I mean, obviously they, they did the joint practice in spite of Aaron Rodgers' protest, but I, I really wouldn't be surprised at all if it was somewhat of a compromise. And I think now that he's gone, you're seeing kind of just an explosion of Matt LaFleur saying, I'm going to do whatever the heck I want now because I'm I'm the man in charge. Things like making the offense do push-ups, which I really doubt Rodgers ever would have done that or been okay with anything like that, um, which is good. The, the coach should be in control of being the coach of the football team. That's the way that that should go. So, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as the uh, the honors thing, somebody else did call in and talk about something similar in terms of should we go for two. Um, and, again, I think it just comes down to a calculus. There, there's a percentage chance that you're going to make it. So our success rate on these plays also – would you get off my camera? You're doing that on purpose, freaking fly. He, he, I, hmm, okay. 
All right. That's fine. That's fine. I'm going to make it hurt. I'm going to make it hurt. I'm just letting you know right now. When I finally figure out a way to catch you, you're going to suffer a little bit because you think you're funny and you're not. Um, <laughs> okay. He's a little funny. He's a little jerk. What are we talking about? Oh, uh, yeah. So, so our ability to convert fourth downs is going to factor into that. If we suck at it, you know, that that's going to kind of determine whether or not we end up, you know, kicking the field goals or what we end up doing. But, um, what the heck was I talking about? I'm, I'm so distracted by this stupid thing, but, but yeah, so, so it's just going to be a matter of is, is, should we take the points, the 50% chance we get the points here and then, you know, 50% that we give them pretty good field position or do we just go for it? And teams are going for it more now anyways, especially if we're talking about in field goal range. And that's going to be kind of the, the, uh, the biggest part here. I mean, it, he does have a relatively big leg, but he also struggles the further he gets away also. So, I mean, what is that range which you say, let's just go for it? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I, I do think actually that's a good point. There probably will be an uptick in going for it on, uh, on fourth down. I'll tell you what, um, I'm first of all distracted, but second of all, we're, uh, we're getting a little bit low on calls. I've got nine, and I want to record another one right after this. So um, we're just going to stop here. And I think I'm actually going to try live again. Let's just try live again. But uh, anyways, I appreciate you guys checking it out and have a good day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.